presuming that if we eliminated the Montessori program, and if you used a formula saying that, okay, in the future, kids are going to go to other Montessori programs, you take the amount of money that we're going to have to pay or lose, at some point in time, it's, it catches up, does it not? I think I'm going to answer that and say, I think you're talking apples and oranges, because I think you may be referring to when we were talking about selling the building to them. We were showing the cost of if we sold them the building that they would increase the number of kids and then after six years we would end up okay no i was right, actually so. talking about eliminating it at some point in time what it cost us to operate versus what it would cost us however you want to look at that yeah in the kids that we would yeah. lose just yep yep okay i have the answer for that i can't speak to the specifics of the number of spots that they have over there for the kids in our program. Yeah. Will we lose some kids from our program to their program? I'm going to probably guess yes. We'll lose some who are that married to the Montessori philosophy. But I'm also going to say with confidence that our Montessori program with our teachers and our building is here, and that Montessori program over there is there. And I think those families are going to make the right decision to keep their kids where they belong with us. I believe that. Um, but I can't. I don't know how many seats are over there. It's hard to predict. Um, but we would have to budget to lose a few kids over there. I know they're pretty tight because, as we all know, they're looking to buy a building. <laughs> we all know. So I don't know how much room they have to take a whole lot more right now. Uh, Mr. Ripple, I do have a question. Um, you showed on your one slide that we're carrying 7% debt. Correct. Um, I assume that's from the bond? Correct. Okay. Um, is there any sort of... It's not savings? one bond. I'm sorry. It's not one bond. It's multiple bonds. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, is there any cost savings, or have, I don't know what we've done in the past, of uh, refinancing? We did that in 13. Is that, is, that an op is that an option for us to save? We, we did that as a strategy when we closed the buildings. Um, that, was a, that was a cost savings for us back in 2013. We refinanced, I think we added seven years. Six yeah, or seven over years. the long term, you'd yeah. pay more. So I wouldn't suggest refinancing. And I think it, to kind of summarize this as a whole is we realize that the state doesn't provide as much funding, that we rely heavily on our local resources. Our tax rate's not very high compared to benchmarking against all the other districts in this area, as well as our cohorts or the state average. And any choice we make here, it is going to impact education and also property values of everybody's home. Um, so really, at, looking at it as a whole, the state's kind of forcing our hand. Um, but again, these are our choices. Okay. And can you explain what the refocus room is under secondary curriculum? Yeah, the refocus room is like we're, we're going to close our all ed programs. Okay. So we want to have a some other type of catch-all program, if you will, another layer of intervention up in McDowell for uh, the kids that might ordinarily end up going out there. So it would be a, a, be a multi-dimensional place for uh, behavioral, even non-behavioral kids that need to get caught up with some work. It could be a short-term placement or a more longer-term placement. Um, it's going to be a new thing, but it would be one, be one staff person uh, that we would staff the room with. and, and um, Mr. Rankin's here. He could speak a little bit more to it, probably a little better than I can. But they've really put together, a, a, you know, an awesome, an awesome uh, <coughs> model for the program. But we think we need it to have something in place for the loss of the uh, of the all, uh, our all ed program. Right. Thank you, Bill. Uh, one other thing is the, uh, and I, you mentioned it before that our our budget amount for fixing the buildings down the road. I mean, right now we're working off the the. Uh, the bond, and that's going to be gone here shortly. Mm -hmm. And we've been spending money like crazy, legitimately so, to keep all the facilities working. And we really don't have, we have a budget line item, but we, I don't know how much we've got in there, but it ain't enough. And I want to, I think we ought to make that somewhat a priority to raise that, as well as the fund balance and all that. But after a couple of years, I'm not sure where we're going to get the money for a roof or, or fix this or fix that. And we need to start now to start putting in some money there. Looking long term. I don't know how, but we need to do it. Looking long term, 
We expect the pension not to be as conserved, such a drastic change from year to year, as well as our debt payments are reduced. Um, I think in two years' time, $800,000 that they're reduced by. And 10, 11 years down the road, we're, we're no longer in debt. Um, so long term, we do have our debt payments for which we can establish a capital reserve. However, they're going to be just as, it's going to be invested in our buildings again. Um, no, I don't think we'll wait 10, 11 years to get agree. Right. <laughs> but we are getting some money from um, the Esther Wood sale that will happen, hopefully cross our fingers with the budget and, and that that will come in at the end of June. That's $1.5 million. Um, we have the Wegmans uh, appeal that we think is going to work favorably for us. That'll help put some money away for us, and if we can ever get some cooperation from our friends over at uh, the Montessori, we could sell that building too. I, well, I just want it on the radar because it's <coughs> so important. Because we're going to have we're going to have problems in, in I think a couple of years if something major happens, and even the, the normal upkeep year to year. You know, I mean the five year plan. We have a five year plan. I don't know how far we're into it. I haven't seen a revised one, but there's millions of dollars spent. Just in normal maintenance, I'll call it normal maintenance. Not to mention the Votech. You know, I keep bringing the this Votech. up. Votech yes. wants to do a 30 some million dollar renovation project. Their buildings are old too. We're in for 36% of whatever they do. So right now, the last I heard is about nine million for us. So I don't know if that's coming either, but we're, we're doing one thing at a time. Luckily that's a unanimous vote. That's a unanimous <laughs> vote and I've been getting a lot of exercise this way. <laughs> My bobblehead goes that way and I go out there. Mr. To, to piggyback on what uh, Mr. DePlacido just uh, brought up, can you um, run down of the bond that we are uh, running, uh, running down on? Can you uh, separate what we, s and maybe Mr. Del Pratt can um, uh, assist, can you separate what we put into buildings, uh, m and maintenance and repair, and what we put into uh, anything with the sports complexes and the sports issues? Can you separate that? Um, having a new turf is one thing, but uh, fixing uh, the roof on a, on a building is actually m and so can you do something like that? Mr. Aliot, I will assure you that for the 21st, I will give you a detailed report of all the expenditures we have made with the bond since its inception, plus an updated report for you, Mr. DePlas, of a long-range uh, capital reserve plan based on what we have accomplished uh, with the bond. I will also, and I do also have those numbers that are already divided down into how much money we spent on infrastructure on the envelope, versus extracurricular activities and athletics. And it will show you that we have not spent that much money on athletics. Okay, thank you. I have some, PDE does have a, uh, Mr. O'Toole, you and I were talking about this property values, and I was wrong, and I, I see where I was wrong with it. You had a, something up there about equivalent mills. Uh, I'll find a way to get it download it to everybody. It's an Excel spreadsheet, so you can mess around with it, but it'll actually show you. I was a little surprised. Uh, when you look at the property values in Mill Creek compared to other school districts throughout the state and what our equivalent millage is, I was a little surprised. It is low. It is. And then the, the, how much you spend per student, of course, the larger school districts, you can defray the cost over a larger number of, of kids, but I was surprised at what they what they assess the value compared to other school districts in the state, and then the millage, the equivalent millage. I'll find a way of getting it to everyone so that you can you can play around with it and you can see, you can compare uh, this <coughs> county, other counties, this school district, and put it in order of uh, uh, how much we spend per student, uh, what our millage rate is, when you see it, you'll understand. 